Reported claims that Liverpool fans had urinated on police officers, resuscitating the dying, and uh, stolen even from the dead. Well, former Sun editor Kelvin McKenzie, who wrote that headline, The Truth, has also offered his profuse apologies to the people of Liverpool for that headline. He did that yesterday, of course. Where, where, where does this leave the sun, then? Chris Horry is co-author of Stick It Up Your Punter, the unofficial history of the sun. Very good morning to you. Um, where does this leave the sun this morning? Well, it leaves it in a very embarrassing position and um, having the record for one of the most deeply flawed and most vile headlines and newspaper front pages in journalism history... I mean, the families have been tremendously dignified. I mean, they've suffered three levels of loss. There was the death of their relatives in horrible, horrible circumstances. Then there was the absolute betrayal of their memory, where they were vilified. It was like a kick in the solar plexus to the families and to the wider community to have those victims vilified in that way. And then thirdly, the uh, official cover-up uh, all the way to the inquest and the dignity that these people have shown in maintaining uh, the truth until they've got this form of indication today is very, very impressive. And uh, in the report now, w we know a bit more about why the Sun towed this line. Um, just well, tell us. Well, that's not entirely the case because Kelvin McKenzie, uh, in my book, I interviewed virtually everybody involved in putting that headline together stage by stage. The, the headline writers, specialist people, sub-editors, I interviewed them, they were all warning Mackenzie. They were saying, Kelvin, this is not fully confirmed. Um, we're not entirely sure about this. Let's just say this is what the police are saying. He said, no, 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 I want this, the truth. Now, in journalism, we have a rule which is extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. You can't just say, oh, poor old me, I'm Kelvin Mackenzie. I'm, I'm only the editor of The Sun and I was misled by a lying police officer. Um, tabloid journalists in particular take the view that everyone's lying to them, so the, the normal scepticism wasn't applied. And these allegations were so counterintuitive. What kind of people would rob the corpses of their own friends and relatives? Mm. What kind of people would sexually harass, that was one of the allegations you didn't mention, uh, ambulance workers, female ambulance workers. The, these claims were so appalling that they would require the highest form of, um, of checking and caution. And none of that was shown. It's not been shown for 25 years. And I think to a degree, uh, this apology is self-serving. Right, so when Kelvin McKenzie did apologise just before the two-minute silence uh, yesterday, um, you don't quite believe it. Did he well, ever show any remorse to you? No, and, uh, well, I've not interviewed him personally about it, but I've interviewed many people in the wake of it. First of all, for a long time, Kelvin McKenzie maintained that this was true, there was at least an element of truth to this, that, that, that the victims had brought this upon themselves. The Sun, under his editorship, was a brilliant paper in many ways, but it had a cruel element of bullying. And you can define bullying, bullying as blaming the victims. Mm. And that's what's happened here. The victims have been blamed for their own downfall. And you can see that in the attitude of the sun in dealing with many other minority or unpopular groups. At that time, I, I, football I don't know if fans you've seen were the, very unpopular people. Sorry, I don't know if you've seen the editorial of the sun this morning, which is a, a very much a mea culpa. It's a, it's a lengthy apology. And it concludes that the people of Liverpool may never forgive us for the injustice we did them. All we can do is offer them an unreserved and heartfelt apology that is profound, sincere and unambiguous. Well, what, else are they going, what else are they going to say? They're not going to continue to maintain it's true. Yeah, now that I, the I last, was just going to uh, ask, do, yeah. do, you, do you think the people of Merseyside are ready to forgive the sun and maybe lift the boycott which so many still observe? Well, I, I don't know. What, what, what's remarkable is this has been one of the most... Um, effective consumer boycotts that we've ever seen. Um, the Sun has lost probably tens of millions of pounds by its circ its circulation went virtually to zero in the immediate aftermath. The paper was burnt in the street. Uh, news agents wouldn't stock it. You had to specific as a working journalist in in Liverpool, you would have to you know specifically ask for it in a news agent, more or less get it in a brown paper bag. And, th and they've kept that going. It has, I suppose, the Sun in their defence said, well, we're being, we the Sun are being scared. We're the real victims here, that these people in Liverpool um, have got a grudge against the rest of the UK uh, and, and, the, and they're shroud-waving about this. That, that, that was a kind of level two uh, def defamation of them. But they have, 
it has become a symbol of the um, of the uh, cohesion and dignity of the of the city of Liverpool, and I suppose that you could say is a rather dim silver lining to all of this. Thank you very much uh, for your thoughts this morning. That's Chris Horry, who is co-author of uh, Stick It Up Your Punter, the unofficial.